Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, with spring upon us, bigger and better playgrounds for children are the order of the day. Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, promptly volunteered to help its local chamber of commerce collect funds for this worthy cause. That's why our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, called us into his office early Friday morning. Us consisted of Mr. Boynton and myself as faculty advisors, Walter Denton, the student who runs the school paper, and Harriet Conklin, the student who runs Walter Denton. <laughs> as soon as we were all seated, Mr. Conklin addressed us. We are here to discuss a project which is near and dear to my heart, children's playgrounds in this community. I'm sure I cannot overemphasize the importance of the little ones in our present-day civilization. We got enough little ones. What the Chamber of Commerce wants is some big playgrounds. <laughs> that was intended as a witticism, Denton, it missed the mark. I don't know. I thought it had a certain... Quiet, Miss Brooks. (laughs) To help raise money for this worthy project, we are holding a charity auction in our gym at four o'clock this afternoon. However, due to a very poor publicity campaign handled by Denton, not very many people know about it. But, Daddy, the poor publicity wasn't all Walter's fault. No, it wasn't, Mr. Conklin. He had lots of other duties. Oh, yes, sir. He's been managing the basketball team, for one thing. Just a minute. It's very nice of you all to defend me, but I'd rather have this out with Mr. Conklin myself. Now, about that publicity campaign, Mr. Conklin. What about the campaign? (laughs) Pretty poor. (laughs) Thank you. What I want from you all now are suggestions to stimulate public interest in our auction and bring out a big crowd of bidders. Well, perhaps we could take some spot announcements on the radio. Yes, that would reach a lot of people. Miss Brooks, have you any idea what a 30-second spot announcement costs? We don't have to buy 30 seconds. We could take about five and say something quick, like, Today auction Madison High School. But, Miss Brooks, that sounds as if we're auctioning off the school. Is that bad? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if the object is just to lure people over... To Any see... feasible suggestions? I have an idea, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> How about you, Harriet? Can you think of anything? I think we should mimeograph some handbills and pass them out door to door during lunch period. A lot of us kids could take different neighborhoods and really plaster the town. Excellent, Harriet. Yes, indeed. This town hasn't been plastered in years. <laughs> <laughs> What's your idea, Walter? Well, I was thinking. Maybe we could paint a big banner and let it fly over the business district all day. Fly over? You mean trailing from the flagpole on some big building? No, trailing from a zeppelin. A zeppelin? Oh, I don't mean the big type zeppelin. He means the small, compact zeppelin suitable for home or office. (laughs) Mr. Boynton, do you suppose you could inject a note of sanity into this discussion? Well, I I have thought of a rather fascinating scheme, sir. (laughs) It's quite humorous, too. Oh, let's have it. (laughs) Well, I've got about a a dozen frogs in the laboratory now. I keep them there for the purpose of... Uh, We know what they're there for, Mr. Boynton, and I just had breakfast. (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, my idea is to take them all into the heart of the town... I'd have them on, on little leashes, of course, and <laughs> get this, Mr. Conklin, they'd be dragging a sign behind them. The frogs would be... <laughs> Go on, boy. Well, the sign the frogs would be dragging would say... <laughs> It'd say, come to the Madison gym today. Things will sure be hopping. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you have my permission to take your idea and hop out of this room. I really think the handbills will do the trick, Daddy. So do I, Harriet. Miss Brooks, do you concur? Frequently. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to discuss something now that we all seem to have overlooked. 
Namely, if our auction is to be a success, we lack one fairly important item. What's that? Something to auction off. <laughs> a very cogent observation. However, the members of the student body were asked to bring their parents' donations to school this morning and leave them just outside the classroom. You, Miss Brooks, will be in charge of augmenting these donations. Me? Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I've got other things to now do with you. Now tell the to truth, up... Miss Brooks. Is there anything as important as raising money for children's playground? Yes, sir. Raising children for the playground. <laughs> you hear that, Mr. Boynton? When are you going to ask... Quiet, Mr. Walter. <laughs> Conklin, I want to help in this campaign. And I really you're don't... going to. I know we might be able to get some more merchandise for the auction for Mr. Jessup. He's a pretty good friend of my dad's. Oh, you mean J.D. Jessup, the big real estate man? Yes, sir. He's the biggest philanthropist in this part of the country. Contributes to everything and anything. Huh? He's a natural-born sucker for a worthwhile cause. <laughs> Charmingly put, Walter. And do get in touch with Mr. Sucker. Uh, Jessup. <laughs> Now, Mr. Boynton, you will see to it that the auction tables are set up in the gym. Oh, yes, sir. You, Miss Brooks, with the assistance of my daughter, will inspect the merchandise outside the classrooms and jot down the approximate value of each object prior to the auction. But, Mr. Conklin, why do I have to go through all that? Because in addition to obtaining more material for this affair, I have also decided to put you in charge of auctioning it off. Meetings adjourned. Oh, but, sir, I don't... I said meetings adjourned. Good day, all. Good day, Good day. Golly, that's quite an honor Daddy conferred on you, Miss Brooks. Just think, you're head auctioneer. Yes, and we both know whose head I'd like to auction off first. <laughs> Let's see what's in this pile over here, Miss Brooks. Hmm. One broken lamp. One pretty beat-up coffee pot. And look at this, an old mix master. It looks as if somebody dropped it in the new mix master. Not much of a haul so far. But I'd better jot it all down anyway. Now, what's this? A box of Christmas tree ornaments. That's timely. <laughs> uh, one woolen sock. A busted harmonica. And here's one ice skate. One ice skate? That'll be for the fellow who gets the one sock. <laughs> Oh, here's an item that should bring in plenty. A rusty doorknob. <laughs> here's a pair of torn woolen gloves. And look at this, Harriet. One blue jay corn plaster. <laughs> That's for the fellow with the one sock and the ice skate. <laughs> oh, we've got to do better than this. Daddy would have donated some things himself, Miss Brooks, but we traded in all our old furniture for the stuff that's going into our new house. Oh, that's right. You're moving soon, aren't you? Uh-huh. Late this afternoon. I'm sure Daddy will invite you over as soon as we're settled. Your mother might, but not your Daddy. He's been angry with me all week, Harriet. That's why he's piling all this extra work on me to get even. Get even for what? A slight accident that occurred in his office on Monday. He asked me to cut the price tag off a new umbrella he'd bought. And? I took a scissors and went after it. Unfortunately, my hand slipped and I cut a nick in the material of the umbrella. How big a nick? Two yards. <laughs> Since then, he's been looking daggers at me, or at least sharp umbrellas. <laughs> well, I've got to get into my next class, Harriet. We'll have to continue this checkup during study period. All right, Miss Brooks. And please, don't take Daddy's tantrums too seriously. Just remember, his bark is much worse than his bite. An even more appropriate slogan would be, let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry, Harriet. I didn't mean that the way it sounds. I wouldn't for a minute want you to think that I considered your father asleep. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth 
now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate is directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate dental cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. With rounding up additional donations for the charity bazaar and doing a little teaching on the side, I had quite a busy morning. When lunch period rolled around, I was still in a collecting mood, so I decided to have lunch with Mr. Boynton, a collector's item if I ever saw one. <laughs> well, here's a nice table by the window, Miss Brooks. Oh, good. Now we can throw the food away without any trouble. Oh, it, it isn't as bad as it was. I think the food's picked up. I know. They don't want you to step in it. <laughs> well, the gym's all set for the auction this afternoon. I'm glad you reminded me, Mr. Boynton. You know, some of the donations are in pretty good shape. There may be some real bargains on the block this afternoon. Do you think so? Absolutely. If somebody wanted to furnish a little love nest, for instance, he could probably do it for next to nothing. I'll bet he could at that. Yes, sir. Anybody with marriage on his mind could save a pretty penny today. Get a real cozy apartment started. If I run into anybody contemplating such a step, I'll certainly tell him about it. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> no, I could use a couple of things for my apartment at that. When you inspected the stuff this morning, you didn't run across a pair of andirons, did you? As a matter of fact, I did. I don't know who donated them, but they look almost brand new. Well, gee, maybe I can pick them up reasonably at the auction. Well, why wait? We can go look at them right after lunch. And if you like them, we'll have a one-man auction, and I'll see that you get them for a fair price. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, would that be fair to the general public? Oh, haven't you heard? They've got andirons. <laughs> have you seen stretched snodgrass anywhere, Harriet? No, Daddy, I haven't. I told that dummy to bring lunch to my office 20 minutes ago. Please, Daddy. That's no way to talk about Madison's star athlete. He may be a star athlete, but it's his brains that need the exercise. <laughs> Calm down, Daddy. I'm going into the cafeteria now, and I'll see what's keeping him. Oh, before I go, Daddy, I just spoke to Mother on the phone, and she told me all the living room furniture has been delivered to the new house. She says she just knows you're going to love it. Mother has such wonderful taste, don't you think? Obviously, she married me. <laughs> Oh, one more thing, Daddy. The store made a mistake and delivered our and irons to the school here instead of the new house. They're right outside your office now. Well, what am I supposed to do with them? Bring them home with you after school. They're awfully pretty, Daddy. Come on, take a look at them. Well, there's nothing better to do while I'm waiting for that dunderhead. Here they are. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're all right, I guess. Mother paid $12 for them. Say, they're pretty. <laughs> well, I'd better get into the cafeteria. I'll send Stretch in with your lunch as soon as I find him. See you later, Daddy. Very well, Harriet. I'll be in my office. Why everything has to happen all at once, I'll never know. All days to be moving. Let's see now. Where are those andirons I saw this morning? Now, are these them? Yes, those are them. <laughs> these are those. <laughs> yep, them's the andirons all right. <laughs> How do you like them? Well, they're perfect. Just what I had in mind. Good. Tell you what I'm going to do. Take them a little closer, bud. What am I offered for these lovely andirons? Uh, how about 50 cents? <laughs> This boy is closer than I thought. <laughs> I've got 50. Do I hear more? Not from me. Why, I'd give 75 cents for these myself. Well, I'll make it 80. 
Now you're talking. I got 80 cents. 80 I've got. Going once for 80. Going twice for 80. I'll be 85 cents. <laughs> That's the spirit. I've got 85. Oh, you're not in this, Mr. Conklin. I'm not? No, sir. Mr. Boynton needs these andirons, and, well, I think 80 cents is a fair price. Oh, so do I, Miss Brooks, considering that I just paid $12 for them. $12? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin. We didn't know they were yours. That's quite all right, Boynton. But just to be on the safe side, I'll take them with me. I'd better get back into my office before Miss Brooks sells my socks. (laughs) We just need one. Hey, Mr. Conklin, I got your lunch. Well, it's about time, Snodgrass. Come with me. I'm terribly sorry about the andirons, Mr. Conklin. There was so much stuff in the hall that there was no way for me... I know, I know, I know. Put everything on my desk, Snodgrass. Yes, sir. Here's your coffee. I just put sugar and cream in it, and I'm sure it's just the way you like it. I'm sure it is. Except that I ordered tea with lemon. (laughs) Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. I'll change it. Never mind. Where's my sandwich? Here it is. Bacon and tomato on whole wheat, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Stretch. And I suppose that's why you brought me peanut butter on gluten bread. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Conklin, I must have got confused. You want me to take it back? No, it's too late now. I'll eat it. But before you leave, I have another errand for you. You could save me a lot of trouble if you would take these andirons over to my new house. The address is 616 Anderson Avenue. Is that clear, Stretch? Yes, sir. You want me to take these, uh... uh what are they again? Andirons. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want me to take these andirons over to your new house at, uh, uh, what was that address again? <laughs> 616 Anderson Avenue. It's very simple if you associate andirons with Anderson Avenue, you see? Oh, sure. You want me to take these Andersons over uh, there? Uh, just, just... <laughs> I'll write out the address for you. There you are. Now, put it in your pocket and don't lose it. Okay, Mr. Conklin. Oh, uh, by the way, Snodgrass, Mrs. Conklin may be out shopping, so just leave the andirons on the front porch. Yes, sir. Hiya, Stretch. Boy, what a deal I just made with Mr. Jessup. Who's he, Walter? He's a big philanthropist. He is? He owns real estate all over this town. And he just told me that one of his houses is being torn down in a few days to make room for the new freeway. Oh, that's too bad. No, it isn't. Instead of selling the furniture in it to a second-hand store, Mr. Jessup is donating it to our charity bazaar. He said we could help ourselves to anything we want. Boy, that's good. Now, you've got to do me a favor, Stretch. I have to get some lunch now, and I want you to find Miss Brooks and ask her to make arrangements to have that furniture picked up. The address is 211 Ironside Avenue. 211 Ironside Avenue. Yeah, I wrote it on this slip of paper. Here, I'll put it in your pocket so you don't lose it. But, Walter... I I sure appreciate you're doing this for me, Stretch. I'll see you later. Wait a minute. Gosh, now he's got everything mixed up. Let's see. Mr. Conklin's new address is on this slip of paper. Where is it? What was it Mr. Conklin said again? Associate and irons? Ironside. That's it. Sure. The and irons go to 211 Ironside Avenue, and we pick up the furniture at 616 Anderson Avenue. (laughs) It was certainly generous of Mr. Jessup to donate a house full of furniture. It sure was. Even if he is a big philant... philant... Steady, boy. (laughs) I hope we're near the place. It's 3.15, and the auction's supposed to start at 4. Besides, I've ordered the moving van for 3.30. Well, it's only another couple of blocks. Well, I'm sorry I was late picking you up, Miss Brooks, but I had to drop some andirons off at Mr. Conklin's new house. I know them well. I almost sold them to Mr. Boynton. Well, this is the place, 616 Anderson Avenue. Say, that's a rather pretty house. It's a shame they have to tear it down and make room for the freeway. Come on, Miss Brooks. Let's go and pick out the furniture we want for the auction. All right, Stretch. Have you got a key to the place? Well, I didn't say nothing about no key. But I'll get us in all right. I'll just kick in a window. But, Stretch, you can't do that. Why not? The place is being torn down anyway. Oh, I know, but that's... A... What'd you say, Miss Brooks? I was just making conversation. (laughs) Well, this window's too small. I can't reach the doorknob. Oh, wait, there's a French window over here. This one's on me. I've got French heels on. Let me help you. You know something, Stretch? One more kick and the freeway can go through here without moving the house. Going once, going twice, sold to the gentleman 
in the Derby for $1.75. And now, folks, we'll have a brief intermission. Why are you doing that, Miss Brooks? We still got a whole bunch of furniture to auction off. I'm just stalling, Walter. I'm hoping some bigger spenders will drop in. I think it's a shame to let a beautiful rug like that last one go for a dollar seventy-five. <laughs> Me too, Mrs. Davis. And I hated to sell that lovely piano for nineteen fifty. <laughs> I'll just have to get higher bids on the remaining items. Oh, oh Miss Brooks. Yes, Mister Boynton. Uh, what would I have to offer you on that red plush love seat? Just a little encouragement. <laughs> you mean money. Well, it's, it's hard to tell, Mr. Barney. I have an idea how we can get higher prices. Connie, why don't I act as sort of a shill? A shill? Yes, I learned that word from my brother, Victor. When I was a little girl, he was in the theatrical business, you know. Yes, I know, Mrs. Davis. During intermission, he always used to sell me the first box of Cracker Jack with a wristwatch in it. What I'll do is just stimulate the bidding a little. Well, it is for a good cause. Hello, Miss Brooks, everybody. I trust the money is pouring into the till. Frankly, Mr. Conklin, it's just drizzling in. <laughs> I'm waiting for Harriet's handbills to show a little better result. Have a seat and make yourself at home, won't you? Oh, that should be easy, Miss Brooks. As I look at this furniture about me, I feel as if I am at home. (laughs) Take that lamp, for example. It's almost an exact duplicate of one my wife bought last week. Cost over $40. Uh, What did that one go for, may I ask? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. (laughs) That is a bargain, isn't it? (laughs) Now then... Inasmuch as this project is so close to my heart, I think I should participate. Now, take that red plush love seat, for example. It would be a perfect match for one I have at home. Paid $150 for it. Uh, put it up for auction right now, Miss Brooks. But, Mr. Conklin, this is intermission. Well, uh, just for our little group. Those others seem quite lethargic anyway. But eh? it's supposed to be a public auction, Mr. Conklin. Well, we're the public, aren't we? Mrs. Davis, Denton, Mr. Boynton, and that'll be plenty. Um, how much money do you have, Denton? Two dollars. Oh, fine, fine. (laughs) How much have you got, Mr. Boynton? Uh, About forty-five dollars. Somebody died? (laughs) Well, let's begin, Miss Brooks. And put up the love seat now. I'll start the bidding. I bid three dollars. Already I'm shut out of the bidding. No, I kind of had my eye on that, too. I'll offer uh, $5. Uh, going, going, $10. Going. <laughs> 15 Going, 25 going. <laughs> 35 40 45 46 I bid $47. Wait a minute. How can you bid $47? I'm loaning my two bucks to Mr. Boynton. They're not doing me any good. <laughs> I'll put an end to this bidding right now. I bid $50. Yes, sir. I bid fifty dollars for this lovely red plush love seat. Going once, going twice. Fifty-five. Yeah. Where did that come from? <laughs> Where did... Oh, oh, it's you, Mrs. Davis. Well, if you bid fifty-five, I guess I'll have to bid uh, sixty-five. Uh, Seventy-five. Eighty. Eighty-five. I've got eighty-five. Going once, going twice. Last chance. Let's have another bid, or this gentleman gets it for eighty-five. Going, going. Remember, folks, in addition to this beautiful love seat, I'm throwing in absolutely free a box of Cracker Jacks. Eighty-six. I bid a hundred dollars, and that's my final offer. A hundred and ten. I bid one hundred and ten dollars. Going, going. Oh, come, come. I'll have to sell it to Mrs. Davis unless I get a higher bid. Going, going. A hundred and fifteen. <laughs> You can't do that, Mrs. Davis. You're bidding against yourself. Oh, what's the difference? I'm just a shill. (laughs) What? I demand that we revert back to my last bid of $100. Sold to Mr. Conklin. Fine. Now, let's see. What else have we here? Oh, there's quite a bit of stuff, thanks to Mr. Jessup's generosity. Why, we practically cleaned out that house of his at 616 Anderson Avenue. Well, Jessup has the true American spirit. The spirit of benevolence and charity. So prevalent and throughout this glorious nation. From the rock-bound coast of Maine to the sunny shores of 616 Anderson (laughs) Avenue! Please, Mr. Conklin. 
I know you're patriotic, but I've never seen your face turn red, white, and blue before. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how did you get into that house? Oh, it was easy. Stretch Snodgrass and I just kicked in a few windows. <laughs> did you now? <laughs> Well, I would like... Pardon me, Mr. Conklin. I've got to talk to you right away, Miss Brooks. Oh, couldn't it wait, Stretch? I'm rather busy at the moment. But I just saw Harriet Conklin, and I found out we made a little mistake. That wasn't Mr. Jessup's house we took the furniture out of. It wasn't? Then whose house was it? Shall we dance? <laughs> Mr. Conklin, it was your house. Well, there's only one way to settle this. Gather round, folks. Gather round. What am I bid for me and Stretch Snodgrass? <laughs> Eve Harden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight... Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Duma's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft. Manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to. Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. As Mr. Conklin slowly turned a deeper shade of purple, there was another flurry of activity in our corner of the gym. 180. 185. 190. 195. Miss Brooks, what's going on? Step aside, Harriet. I'm taking your father's blood pressure. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size palm olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had. Get big bath size palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. 
Well, the baseball season is rapidly getting underway. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is full of enthusiasm for our national pastime. Yes, I am enthusiastic about the national pastime. Largely, I must admit, because of the enthusiasm for the game felt by one Philip Boynton. My national pastime. <laughs> Last Thursday morning at breakfast, my landlady asked me, how come? How come this sudden interest in baseball, Connie? Seems to me you never cared about the game very much. Oh, you're wrong, Mrs. Davis. I always had a deep-rooted love for the game. It just took someone to bring it out. <laughs> Mr. Boynton. It wasn't Ty Cobb. <laughs> The way I look at it, baseball will eventually further our romance. How do you mean, Connie? Well, I figure if he spends enough time looking at curves and watching fellows trying to get to first base, it might give him an idea. (laughs) He's a backward sort, all right. Not about baseball. Tomorrow's the opening game, Mrs. Davis, with Clay City High. And already Mr. Boynton's invited me to go with him. Now, of course, my troubles just begin. I've got to have a nice sport outfit to wear to the game. What's wrong with the outfit you've got? Mr. Boynton's seen me wearing it three times already. Three times? Yes, to the opening games of 1949, 48, and 47. (laughs) I made up my mind that this year, when they throw out the first ball, I'm throwing out that dress. (laughs) Oh, if only I wasn't so broke. Let me think a minute. If there was somebody who could lend me... I'm broke, too, Connie. (laughs) If there was somebody else who could... No, I guess borrowing isn't the answer. Wait a minute, Connie. I was talking to Mr. Fisher yesterday. He's the nice man who runs the pawn shop on 4th Street. I know. We've met several times. (laughs) Well, I just happened to drop in yesterday to see that my brother Victor's cigarette case was polished. And Mr. Fisher showed me the nicest sport dress. Brand new. He had just picked it up at Sherry's department store at their spring sale. A sport dress? What did he want it for, waiting on trade? (laughs) It's not for himself, Connie. It was for his daughter. But unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for you, it didn't fit her. And he couldn't take it back to Sherry's because all sales were final. So? So maybe he'd be willing to let you have it on a swap. But what could I swap him for it? Well, no, I'll need these fillings as I get older. (laughs) I'd be glad to let you take the vacuum cleaner, Connie. Well, that's very generous of you, Mrs. Davis, but wouldn't it make it terribly inconvenient when you wanted to clean the rug? Oh, not at all. I'm pawning the rugs next week. (laughs) But with summer coming and all, it's much cooler in the house without rugs. Besides, I need the money for other things. Now you just take the Hoover and stop off at Mr. Fisher's on your way to school. I certainly appreciate your kindness, Mrs. Davis, but I sort of hate the idea of having to get anything like this at a pawn shop, I mean. I don't see why you should feel that way, Connie. It's just like any other business, and a lot older than most. Take Christopher Columbus, for instance. Without a pawn shop, where would he be today? Same place. You're right, Mrs. Davis, though. If if Queen Isabella hadn't raised the money on her jewels, Columbus couldn't have discovered America. Exactly. Then where would you be? That's easy. I'd be teaching Indian kids for very little wampum. Good morning, Mr. Fisher. Well, Miss Brooks, I haven't seen you since you redeemed your locket. Correction. You haven't seen me since I pawned it again. After the holidays, remember? Oh, of course. It was on a Monday in January. I recall it because I took in six pairs of binoculars that day. The better to see my locket with, my dear. (laughs) But what I'm here about this morning is a slight business deal. You see, Mrs. Davis suggested that you might be interested in this vacuum cleaner. Well, Mrs. Davis is an old friend, but frankly, we don't have too much of a call for vacuum cleaners. Oh, I don't want any money on it. I just want a swap. You'll find plenty of use for the vacuum cleaner, too, because Mrs. Davis is about to put her rugs in your protective custody for the summer. Again? (laughs) Well, then I guess I could use the vacuum at that. Now, let's see now. What could I give you in return? 
Oh, here's something that might come in handy. It's for dressing and undressing, a genuine Chinese screen. Well, actually, we have very few Chinese getting dressed at our play. <laughs> in mind, Mr. Fisher, was this blue and gold sport dress over here. Those happen to be our school colors, and, well, I'm going to our opening baseball game tomorrow. I understand, my dear, and you're perfectly welcome to the dress. Oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Fisher. Uh, just one thing, though, Miss Brooks. Are you sure the dress will fit you? Even if it doesn't, I'll look better in it than I would in the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooke. Hello, Harriet. How's the beloved daughter of Madison's beloved principal this morning? Fine, thanks. Are you going past Daddy's office? As fast as possible. <laughs> what can I do for you? Would you mind dropping this letter on his desk? It just arrived. All right, I'll take it in. Thanks. Oh, and I almost forgot. Would you take this loving cup? Just for delivering a letter? Oh. <laughs> The baseball trophy Madison won last year. Daddy asked me to pick it up after it was polished. I've got to run now. I want to catch Walter Denton before he invites anyone else to the opening game tomorrow. I know the feeling. See you later, Harriet. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Conklin. I've got something for you. That is a matter of opinion. <laughs> Oh, the, the trophy. Oh, yes, well, put it on my desk, please. Yes, sir. There. Anything else? Oh, yes, sir. Harriet gave me a letter for you. Now, where in the world did I put it? Let me look in my bag. Oh, it must be in here somewhere. Oh, that's funny. I can't seem to find it. Miss Brooks, <laughs> each day the post office department handles hundreds of tons of mail. They carry it on trains and boats and planes over thousands of miles of varying terrain. They go through rain and sleet and snow and dark of night. And you can't be trusted to walk ten yards with one loud one letter. Please, sir, I, I may have dropped it in the hall. I'll go out and look for it in a minute. Meanwhile, I wish you'd cheer up a bit. Think of the ball game tomorrow and how we're going to whip Clay City High. You picked a perfect subject to elevate my spirits, Miss Brooks. For your information, there will be no game tomorrow. What? But you can't do that to Mrs. Davis's vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I mean, I purposely got a brand new used sport dress for this game. I've been looking forward to it for months. So have I, Miss Brooks. Nothing would please me more than to soundly drub Jason Brill's Clay City Tigers. But the sad fact remains that we can't play them. Why not? Because through some appalling mismanagement of the athletic fund, our team has no uniforms. Who's been handling the athletic fund? Uh, that is beside the point. <laughs> I, I went a bit overboard on the basketball appropriation. Oh, this is awful, Mr. Conklin. Baseball is the most popular sport at Madison. How well I know it. That's why I've taken my glasses off, Miss Brooks. They steam up when I gaze at this statue near my desk. The bust of the man for whom we've named our athletic stadium. The one person responsible for inaugurating baseball at Madison. <laughs> our beloved founder, Yoda Critch. <laughs> Oh, you feel badly, sir. A lump comes into my throat when I think of how he would take this catastrophe. And when I hold this loving cup in my two hands... Uh, Mr. Conklin. Yes, Miss Brooks. Would you mind letting go of my ears? <laughs> oh. oh, I'm sorry. I better put my glasses back on. <laughs> Look, Mr. Conklin, isn't there something we could do to make the game possible? I'm afraid not, Miss Brooks, unless we... Oh, wait a minute. Do you think our boys could play good ball without uniforms? I don't know how good they'd play, but they'd certainly draw a nice crowd. <laughs> our Miss Brooks, 
starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth, now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, Mr. Conklin refused to let our team play without the proper equipment especially against Madison's traditional rival, Clay City High. I was pretty blue about the whole thing, so when lunch period arrived, I headed for Mr. Boynton's biology laboratory, my customary destination when I feel confused or unhappy or contented or cheerful or anything. (laughs) (laughs) Hello, Mr. Boynton. I... Mr. Boynton? Oh, I'm over behind these cages. Just doing a little repair work. Have you heard about the game being called off tomorrow? Yes, and I'm just sick about it. I had my heart set on going to that game tomorrow. So did I. But don't be too depressed. We can still do something else together. Together? Oh, oh, that's right. You were going along to the game with me, weren't you? Obviously, I was indispensable to you. (laughs) But I know what might be fun. We could go to the movies right after school. By four o'clock, we could be sitting in the balcony at the State Theater. Oh, but the State doesn't open until 6.30. That's what I say. It might be fun. (laughs) I I don't understand. How could we have fun sitting in a movie for two and a half hours if there's nothing on the screen? (laughs) Mr. Martin, please do me a favor. The next time we're in the balcony, borrow the usher's flashlight and see how your fellow Americans are living. I guess I may seem pretty naive on occasion, Miss Brooks. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you're quite a man of the world. Another world, of course. (laughs) Now, suppose we go to lunch. I've got to finish early and drop into the domestic science room. Miss Westville promised to check my new sport dress and see what alterations it needs. Oh, is that what you've got in that box, a dress? Yes. Now, come on, Mr. Boynton, let's go. Well, I'll have to join you a bit later on, Miss Brooks. I've got to finish repairing the locks on these rabbit cages. They're brand new, too. I can't understand how these iron locks were broken. Must have some pretty tough rabbits in there. (laughs) Look at them, will you? Aren't they cute? I keep the female rabbits in one cage and the males in another. You would. get your work done as soon as possible, huh? I will, Miss Brooks. I'd go with you right now, but it's rather important. You know how rabbit cages are. Of course. You wouldn't want to come back from lunch and find six cages where there were two before. See, now, where can I sit? Oh, there's Walter Denton. Mind if I join you, Walter? Not at all. Welcome aboard, almost appetizing (laughs) morsel of Madison's faculty. Thank you, Walter. Well, it's a pleasure, I'm sure. Your apple-cheeked, cherry-lipped countenance is like meat and drink to my beauty-starved senses. Thanks again. 
Now get your teeth out of my arm and back into your saddle. <laughs> I'm afraid the ebullience of my greeting to you is not a true barometer of my feelings, Miss Brooks. No, no, we're formally cavorted the blithest of blithe spirits. There now sits a sodden lump of gloom, a veritable clod of a boy. Walter Denton, boy clod. <laughs> but if I may be permitted an observation in your native tongue... What, pray, is the cause of this unseeming cloddery? Oh, it's Harriet Conklin. We had an argument, and now she's not talking to me. Oh? What was the argument about? Well, it started when I heard that Mr. Conklin was calling off tomorrow's ball game. And I said, I couldn't understand how our athletic fund got into such bad shape that we couldn't afford uniforms for the team. Then? Well, then I mentioned Mr. Conklin's administration of the funds in a way that Harriet construed as derogatory. What did you say? I said he was a marble-headed dimwit. <laughs> I guess that could be construed as derogatory. <laughs> Look, I know how you feel, Walter. I'm disappointed, too. But after My all... My feelings transcend disappointment, Miss Brooks. They can only be described as abjectly abysmal, cataclysmically morbid, and horrendously depressive. What did you have for lunch today? A thesaurus <laughs> burger? <clears throat> Look, Walter, maybe all hope isn't lost. Oh, pardon me, Miss Brooks, but Mr. Conklin wants to talk to us about the ball game tomorrow. Yes, Miss Brooks, all hope is not lost. Now, you see, Walter, I told you. I knew it! I just knew if there was any possible chance to salvage that contest, Mr. Conklin would be the man to do it. Yes, sir. It isn't every school that can boast of a principal who, even when he's made a few prior mistakes with the athletic fund, can bounce right back. Oh, quiet! <laughs> May we sit down with you for a moment, Miss Brooks? Certainly, sir. What's this about the game tomorrow? Do you really think we can hold it? That, my dear, depends upon the cooperation we get. Suffice it to say, I've contacted a sporting goods store in town who offered to rent us all the necessary uniforms and equipment for a paltry $25. Isn't that wonderful? Great. Have you got the paltry 25 Mr. Conklin? Uh, no, no, I haven't. My salary check doesn't come through until next week. However, that is not going to stop me. I feel now that I'm duty-bound to field a team against Clay City. Duty-bound? Yes, Miss Brooks. Only minutes ago, as I sat fondling our loving cup, symbol of Madison's baseball championship of bygone seasons, I looked up at the statue of our founder, Yoda Critch. And suddenly, I seemed to hear his voice say, with a tear in it, I started baseball at Madison Osgood. Keep it going, boy. And then, then I heard myself saying, but Yoda... Where can I get $25 for uniforms? And fantastic as it may sound, Yoda said, Go, Osgood. Go and get the money from Miss Brooks. <laughs> Are you following me, Miss Brooks? You lost me when Yoda said, Go, Osgood. <laughs> It's such a worthy cause, Miss Brooks. If I had the money, I'd hand it over in a minute. So would I if you had the money. <laughs> or if I had it, for that matter. But my check doesn't come through until next week either. But surely you must have a little something salted away. Just salt, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, gosh, Mr. Conklin, I wish I could be helpful, but I just can't. You rarely are. <laughs> I laid out my last $40 for those rabbit cages. I won't get it back from the board for over a month. And I just bought this sport dress with my last vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that is, I got it at a very expensive place, and I feel as if I've been run through a if vacuum cleaner. If we could cleaner. only borrow the money somewhere for just a few days, I'm sure... Wait a minute, could... Mr. Conklin. Did you hmm? say borrow? Why? Yes. For just a few days? That's right. Sir, you've given me an idea. Yes, I'm almost positive it'll work. Now, just sit still, everyone. I've got a couple of stops to make. Gee, Miss Brooks, you look like you're on your way to a ball. You're close, Walter. I'm on my way to three of them. <laughs> Mr. 
Fisher? I'm at the rear counter, Miss Brooks. Just step this way, please. Certainly. I know you're a busy man, Mr. Fisher, so I'll be brief. What will you give me for this bust of Yodar Critch? Well, now, I don't like to seem callous, Miss Brooks, but you'd be surprised how few calls I get for busts of Yodar Critch these days. <laughs> I just want the money for a short time. Money? You want money for this? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. That would be out of the question. However, I've still got that large Chinese screen here. You could have that in exchange. Oh, excuse me. I think another customer's coming in. I'll get back to you in a minute. Another customer? If you don't mind, Mr. Fisher, I'd rather not be seen in here with this statue. I'll just duck behind the screen until he goes. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like to borrow some money on what I have in this box. And what might that be? It's a blue and gold sport dress. <laughs> you want to pawn a sport dress? Oh, yes, sir. It belongs to uh, 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 my wife. You know, the little woman. <laughs> oh, the little woman. Yeah, well, I don't usually take in dresses. Uh, unless they're in the family, that is. But... Uh... Uh, do you mind if we discuss this in a moment? Another customer is coming in. Oh, another customer? But I mustn't be seen in here with this dress. I'd better hide behind the screen until he's gone. <laughs> uh, don't rush yourself. It'll take him a few minutes to open the door. Generally, they peer into the window outside for quite a while before sidling in. <laughs> I don't want to take any chances. I'll see you later. Oh, pardon me. I didn't know anyone else was hiding behind... Miss Brooks! <laughs> don't stand there, hubby. Kiss the little woman. <laughs> This is most embarrassing, Miss Brooks. I, uh, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Well, I... Never mind that, Mr. Boynton. What are you doing with my dress? Well, I... Uh, never mind that, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? <laughs> Quiet, Mr. Boynton. Another customer just came in. Hey, good afternoon, my boy. Can I help you? Yes, sir. I'd like to hawk these rabbit cages. <laughs> rabbit cages? Yeah, just for a short period, and then we'll take it off your hands, rabbits and all. This is an interesting day. <laughs> and business is booming, too. I see another customer is about to enter. Another customer? Oh, I don't want anybody to see me in here. i got to hide somewhere. Shh. Room for one more down front. <laughs> oh, thanks, Miss Brooks. I'll just... Miss Brooks! Get behind the screen, Walter. Oh, you won't tell Mr. Boynton about these cages, will you? I'm sure she won't, Walter. <sighs> Good. I wouldn't want you to find out that I... <laughs> Miss Boynton! Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? Well, I... Miss Brooks, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Never mind that, Walter. What are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cages? Never mind my rabbit cages, Miss Brooks. What are you doing with that statue? What are you doing with my dress, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> Walter, what are you doing with my rabbit cages? Well, that was fun. Shall we go around again? <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, we've got to figure out some way we're... Quiet, Walter. Another customer just came in. Uh, I can see through a crack in this screen. He's coming all the way back to the last counter. And what may I do for you, sir? I, sir, should like to negotiate a loan on this silver loving cup. You mean you want to hock it? Don't be vulgar. Twenty-five dollars would relieve my temporary financial embarrassment, and the cup would be redeemed in a very short time. Uh, well, uh... Oh, good heavens, somebody's coming in. I can't be seen in this sort of establishment. I'll just hide behind this screen until he leaves. Oh, oh I'm sorry, boy. Oh, that's okay, Mr. Conklin. I'll move over. Thank you, Walter. Now, Miss Brooks, if you'll move over a bit so that I can stand between Mr. Boynton and yourself, I'm sure we'll all be... Miss Brooks! <laughs> Mr. Boynton! Walter Denton! This is roll call. You've left out Yodar Critch. <laughs> so I have. Miss Brooks, what are you doing with that statue of Yodar Critch? Well, I... Walter, what are you doing with Mr. Boynton's rabbit cage? Well, I... Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with Miss Brooks' dress? Yes, Mr. Boynton, what are you doing with my dress? Quiet, quiet. That sort of buck passing will never take my mind off that statue, Miss Brooks. It won't? 
Well, try this on for size, Mr. Conklin. What are you doing in this pawn shop with the Madison baseball trophy? Ooh. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> now, let's face it, folks. We're all here for the same purpose, to raise the money for the baseball uniform. Sure. Now, if Mr. Fisher will come through, we'll all always... Well, my last customer just left. My, isn't it getting a little stuffy for you folks behind that screen? <laughs> Stuffier than ever lately. Mr. Fisher, this is a very strange situation, but we're all here after the same $25. Now, you've seen our collateral. Take any or all of it and please give us the money. Of course, my dear, of course. I'll give you $25 on this loving cup alone. Wonderful, Mr. Fisher. Now I won't have to cancel the game tomorrow. And, folks, our mutual mortification has not been in vain. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. There seems to be a letter in this loving cup. A letter? Oh, that must be the one Harriet gave me for you this morning. It probably dropped in the cup while I was holding them both. Uh, no doubt, Miss Brooks. Oh, I left my glasses at the office. Will you read the letter to me, please? Yes, sir. Why, it's from Jason Brill. It says, Dear Mr. Conklin, Due to a shortage in our athletic fund, I am forced to cancel tomorrow's baseball game because my team has no uniform. <laughs> Garden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, we were all very disappointed by the postponement of the opening baseball game with Clay City. But my chagrin was short-lived because that night I had a date with Mr. Boynton. And soon I heard him saying... Come a little closer, Miss Brooks. All right. How's this? Closer. Like this? A a little closer. Please, Mr. Boynton, if we get any closer to that movie screen, we'll be in the picture. Turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Custard Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crana, Gloria McMillan, and Frank Nelson. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove.
palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, it usually takes a few days... But Saturday inevitably arrives, and when it does, our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, gets a chance to sleep late. Yesterday, she didn't join her landlady in the breakfast nook until 10 o'clock. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Davis. Good morning, Connie. How did you sleep last night? Not too well. I have a little cold, and that cat of ours bounced into my room just as I was dozing off. Minerva. But she was only playing with her ball, Connie. I don't mind her playing ball, but I can't handle these night games that go into extra innings. <laughs> Believe me, the next time Minerva keeps me up... Oh, until not three... so loud, Connie. She'll hear you. And you know how sensitive she is. Meow. <laughs> See? She heard us mentioning her name. Please, Mrs. Davis, I know Minerva's bright, but you're attributing an intelligence to her that she doesn't actually possess. Oh, but she does. I'm sure she recognizes her name. Oh, that's ridiculous. Listen, Minerva. Hi, Minerva. <laughs> there you are. Wait. Here, Charlie. Nice Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> How are things, Bessie? <laughs> What's new, Max? <laughs> Minerva doesn't even know whether she's a boy or a girl. Why should she? She's only two years old. But there are... <laughs> there are certain things I'd just as soon keep from her until she's older. <laughs> Me too, and let's start with my nylons. <laughs> Thank goodness I've got this one pair left for my date with Mr. Boynton this afternoon. Oh, do you have a date with Mr. Boynton today? No, but I'm going to suggest it as soon as he can get away from Sherry's department store. Sherry's? Yes, he's pinch-hitting for a salesman friend of his who has a dental appointment. But, Connie, are teachers permitted to do anything but teach? Oh, of course, Mrs. Davis, especially if there's no money in it. <laughs> Now, I'd better get started if I'm going to go downtown. But, Connie, I have to go to a ladies' aid meeting today, and if we're both out of the house, she'll be all alone. Who'll be all alone? You know. M-I-N-E-R-V-A. <laughs> oh, great. Now she can spell. <laughs> She'll only be gone for a few hours. I'm sure she'll be perfectly all right. No, Connie. She hasn't been herself lately, and I just wouldn't feel right if I left her alone. Say, I know what we could do. Harriet Conklin has always been very fond of Minerva. If you could drop her off at their place on your way down to Sherry's... All right, Mrs. Davis. I'll drop Minerva off for you. I wonder who that can be. I know a surefire way to find out. Come in! Hi, Mrs. Davis, and to you, fair flower of the faculty, a thousand salams. Thank you, Walter Denton, and I've had my share, thank you. But to what do we owe the honor of this visit? Oh, I just happened to be driving by when the thought occurred to me that maybe I could give you a lift someplace, after I help you finish breakfast, that is. Well, now that you mention it, you can. I'm going down to Sherry's to pick up Mr. Boynton. Oh, uh, just a minute, Connie. I was about to suggest that you borrow my car for the day. Then you could take Mr. Boynton for a nice ride in the country. Yeah, way out in the country. <laughs> but, Mrs. Davis, what about you? The ladies' aid meeting isn't very far, Connie. Walter can drop me there, and I can always get a ride home. Mrs. Davis, you've made yourself a deal, and thanks very much. Not at all, dear. 
The keys are on the table in the hall, right next to your hat and coat. I'm on my way. Will you excuse me, Walter? You go with my blessing, O oh fairest of the fair. May 10,000 suns shine upon this meeting with your beloved. Thank you, Ahmed. <laughs> on my way out, I'll give your camel a lump of sugar. <laughs> oh, uh, Connie, aren't you forgetting something? You said you'd drop off uh, you-know-who at the Conklin. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Davis. Come on, you-know-who. Oh, isn't that cute? She won't budge and let you call her by name. I know. Let's go, Clyde. I don't like to hurry you, Walter, but if you'll finish your milk now, I'm rather anxious to get to the meeting. This being the first of the month is rather an important one. Say, you're right. Today is April 1st. April Fool's Day. Gosh, I better get busy. I haven't even thought up a way to plague our beloved principal. You better leave Mr. Conklin alone, Walter. Oh, not a chance. Let's see now. He's crazy about television, but so far he's been too tight to spring for a set. Oh, wait. It's coming. It's coming. A real wild goose chase. Oh, finish your milk, dear. As soon as I get my hat and primp up a bit, I'll be ready to go. Oh, take your time, Mrs. Davis. I got a phone call to make anyway. Here we are. First, I'll tie this handkerchief around the mouthpiece. Yeah, there. Osgood Conklin speaking. Be brief, please. <laughs> hello, 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 Mr. Conklin. This is the Lucky Gold Mine program calling. Wallace Bacon, your spendthrift quiz master on this end. Bacon? I don't know any Wallace Bacon. I don't believe in wasting my time in talking on the phone to people who obviously don't know... The Lucky Gold Mine Program? <laughs> if you answer one question correctly, Mr. Conklin, we will present to you a fabulous television set. A television set? Oh, thank you, thank you. An admiral television set with a crystal clear 16-inch screen. Good, good, good. <laughs> However, Mr. Conklin, since today is Saturday and there are no deliveries, you'll have to go down to Sherry's department store and pick it up. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> What is the question, sir? Here it is, ready. In the popular song, Call of the Wild Goose, can you give me the words of the first line whose melody goes... <laughs> Do you know those words, Mr. Conklin? I must go where the wild goose goes. You certainly will. <laughs> that is, congratulations, Mr. Conklin. The television set is yours. I should never have let your mother take the car to that ladies' aid meeting, Harriet. Now I'm stranded. A beautiful television set waiting for me at Sherry's, and I'm unable to pick it up. What's your hurry, Daddy? You can pick it up later. But there's a program on today that I'm particularly interested in. Maybe someone else could pick it up for me. I wonder who I could get. Oh, I, I, I'll get it. I'll get it. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks, come in, my dear. Uh, but leave your coat on. I just dropped by to leave our cat <laughs> with Harriet for the afternoon. Hi, Miss Brooks. Oh, you brought Minerva. Meow. <laughs> well, uh, take the beast into the kitchen, Harriet. Miss Brooks and I have something to talk over. Yes, Daddy. Come on, Minerva. I'll give you a nice bowl of milk. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Miss Brooks. <laughs> I will come right to the point. Have you any means of transportation? Yes, sir. Mrs. Davis loaned me her car. Did she now? <laughs> yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I just stopped by here on my way to Sherry's department store. You are so right. Hmm? <laughs> Miss Brooks, you are now looking at the fortunate winner of a quiz contest. At this very moment, a brand new television set is waiting for me at Sherry's department store. My. And who do you think is going to pick it up for me? Uh, Western Union? No. The Wells Fargo people? <laughs> no. No, the person I had in mind is the one member of my faculty whom I most admire, respect, and cherish. Oh, you're going yourself? <laughs> no. No, my car isn't home. Moreover, I must wait here for a call from Mr. Stone. The president of our board of education wants to consult me about his speech. 
speech. Yes, he's addressing the convicts at the dedication of the new library at the county jail. It's being uh, televised this afternoon, Miss Brooks, and I'm most eager to have my set promptly installed. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I'm meeting someone at Cherry's. That is why I, I was delighted when you so graciously volunteered to pick it up for me. I volunteered? Well, forgive me, Mr. Conklin, but I didn't hear a word I said. <laughs> oh? Well, you said, and I quote, I'll be most happy to pick it up for you, Mr. Conklin. But, sir, and I... And as you spoke, you looked squarely into the eyes of your beloved principal, that self-same principal with whom you come in daily contact and whose pleasure or displeasure determines whether your life in the hallowed halls of Madison High shall be bearable or unbearable. I repeat, I'll be most happy to pick it up for you, Mr. Carter. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's is directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. As soon as I left Mr. Conklin, I drove down to Sherry's department store to find out about his prize. But when I entered the radio and television department, I saw Mr. Boynton standing by a cash register. Immediately, I forgot about Mr. Conklin's prize and concentrated on mine. <laughs> As I approached him, Mr. Boynton seemed quite preoccupied. Well, yes, madam. Is there something I can do for you? Plenty, but not in front of all these people. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for not recognizing you. This sort of work is a little out of my line, but what are you doing here? Just shopping. But if you're only filling in for your friend for half a day, you will be free all afternoon, won't you? Oh, yes, I will. I've just got a little errand to attend to, and then I'll be free, too. Oh, really? What are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. I thought I might run down to the poultry market and watch them pluck chickens. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Boynton, I've borrowed Mrs. Davis's car for the day, and I thought maybe we could take a ride out in the country together. Oh, fine. And while we're waiting, I'll show you around. There are some wonderful new television sets in. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me. Mr. Conklin asked me to pick up his set and bring it home to him. Oh, now, don't tell me he finally broke down and bought one. No, he won it in a radio quiz. They called him this morning, he said. Oh, what a break for him. Where's the set supposed to be? Right here. Haven't you been notified about it? Not yet. Maybe there's a memo on my desk. I'll look as soon as I put these tubes up on that shelf over there. Oh, I'll put the tubes away for you. We better find out about Mr. Conklin's set right away. All right, Miss Brooks. Uh, have you got something to carry the tubes in? There are quite a few of them. I'll just put them in my bag. Now you run along. Well, the desk is just three aisles down. If any customers come by, just tell them I'll be back in a minute. I will, Mr. Boynton. Six carpet sweepers, two Thor glad irons. Four vacuum cleaners. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hurley. You're checking the merchandise again? As a good store detective, can't be too careful. It's almost automatic with me by now. I'm practically a walking inventory. Well, uh, there's nothing missing from my department. See you later, Mr. Hurley. I've got to look for something. Okay. Eight portable radios. Nine record players. Now, if I could just get these two more tubes in this bag, I could save myself a trip. Too bad that bag isn't larger. Maybe you could get a piano in there. <laughs> Oh, yes. These big bags do come in handy sometimes, don't they? Yeah, I'm sure they do. Perhaps I'd better introduce myself. I'm R.J. Hurley, the store detective here. 
What are you doing with those tubes, young woman? These? Why, I'm just going to put them away on that shelf. Uh, hi, Miss Brooks. Oh, oh, hello, Hurley. Hello, Boynton. Do you know this woman? Well, certainly. She's Miss Brooks. I'm glad to hear it. Sorry I thought what I thought. But suspicion is my business, you might say. Well, good day, folks. Please table them. <laughs> oh, he's quite a character. But look here, Miss Brooks. I found this note on my desk addressed to Mr. Conklin. Let's see. Yeah. It says, congratulations, Mr. Conklin, but the special set you have won will have to be picked up at Sherry's downtown warehouse. Continued good luck, signed Wallace Bacon, Quizmaster. The warehouse? That's quite a ways from here, Miss Brooks. You couldn't handle the set by yourself. Well, I promised Mr. Conklin I'd get it for him, no, though. No, wait a minute. One of the kids from school is working in the stock room on this floor, Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, the brain. <laughs> I'll get him to keep an eye on the department until my friend gets back, and I'll go along and help you deliver Mr. Conklin's television set. Great, Mr. Boynton. And as soon as we've done that, we can have the rest of the day to ourselves. Right. Now let's walk over to the stock room and get Stretch. Are you ready, Miss Brooks? Mr. Boynton, I was born ready. <laughs> That's funny. The warehouse seems deserted, and the door is locked. Well, let's see. Say, say, what's this? There's a note sticking out. A note? Yeah, it says, Dear Osgood Conklin, please forgive this oversight, but the warehouse is closed on Saturdays. If you'll return to Sherry's, you'll find your television set there, signed Wallace Bacon. Oh, for heaven's sake. We'll never get out to the country. Well, what do we do now? Drive back to the store? No, let's be different. Let's walk and carry the car on our shoulders. <laughs> Come on over to the television department, Miss Brooks. Maybe Stretch Snodgrass knows something about this. Maybe so. He must know something about something. Well, hello, Miss Brooks. Hi, Mr. Boynton. What do you know? Well, not very much, I'm afraid. Me either. You're just modest. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to pick up a television set here that Mr. Conklin won this morning. Has the store manager mentioned it to you, Stretch? No, ma'am. I haven't seen the manager all morning. And I didn't receive no memo Miranda on it, neither. No what? Memo Miranda. But I'll go take a look in the stock room. Maybe it shut up there while I was out here. And if Memo Miranda didn't show up, maybe Carmen Miranda dropped in. <laughs> no, no, wait. We, we've got to get this thing straightened out, Miss Brooks. Stretch, you go into the stock room and see if they know anything about it in there. Yes, sir. I'll be back in a jaffy. <laughs> yes, Stretch, do hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> look, Mr. Boynton, we can't keep Mr. Conklin waiting any longer. Why don't we just take one of these floor models to him? Between us, we could handle it easily. There's a freight elevator right over there. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, we have no authorization. Oh, it's bound to come through sooner or later. If Mr. Conklin doesn't get that set today, there'll be no living with him for the rest of the semester. Maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Now, let's see. Which one should we take? Well, they only have five models on display. Here's a nice one over here. Right. Let's roll it into the elevator. <laughs> Three speed queen washing machines. One, two, three. Five television sets. One, two, three, four. Four. That's funny. I haven't seen any customers in here in an hour. I'd better report this to the store manager right away. Although with a new man in the department, anything could happen. Probably just a mix up or something. Oh, Miss Brooks, I Miss Brooks. Mr. Boynton. That's funny, they must have left. Gosh, Mr. Conklin will be burning up if he don't get that set he won. I know. I'll bring one of these floor models over to him. At least that'll keep Miss Brooks out of a jam. Go back and make sure, he says. <laughs> make sure I can count up to four is what he means. All right, Mr. Store Manager, here goes. Four television sets. One, two, three. Poof. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Come along, Denton. We've got to get that set in a hurry. Uh, here's the television department. But, Mr. Conklin, maybe you ought to think this thing over. Take your time before... Thanks we... to Miss Brooks, I have very little time left. Where she's disappeared, do I'll never know. But, sir, maybe this whole thing is a mistake. You can't just take a television set off the floor of a store without asking somebody. Well, there's no one to ask. I was told to pick it up here, and that's just what I'm going to do. Here, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll sign this sales slip and leave it on the counter. Received of Sherry's department store... Television set. Sign, Osgood Conklin. Ha, 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 ha,
How could somebody steal a television set, he says. Well, they didn't steal one, they stole two. Okay, so count the remaining three again, he says. Okay, so I'll count. One, two... Oh, come on. (laughs) Wait a minute. What's this? Received a Sherry's department store, television set, signed Osgood Conklin. Now, that's something new. A crook who leaves a receipt. (laughs) Daddy was pretty angry when he made Walter drive him downtown to look for you, Miss Brooks. But now that you and Mr. Boynton have brought this television set, I'm sure everything will be all right. How long have they been gone, Harriet? About a half hour. They should be back any minute. Oh, maybe that's Mr. Conklin now. I'll get it. I've got some fast apologizing to do. Let's all go. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Look what I brung. The television set Mr. Conklin won. Oh, no. Cheaper. Good gravy. Watch your language. <laughs> it's on caster, see? Well, where will I put it? Put it next to this other set. Mr. Conklin can use them for bookends. Miss <laughs> Brooks and Mr. Boynton brought the set that Daddy won. Well, you had no right to take that one from the store. Well, that'll be reported as stolen. Holy cow. I'm a fugitive. <laughs> well, I, I'm as guilty as you are. Meet Connie Brooks, girl Dillinger. <laughs> This is serious, Miss Brooks. What are we going to do with these two sets? Let's turn them on. Maybe hop along Cassidy will ride one of them back to Sherry. Uh, hold it steady, Denton. Steady. Yes, sir. There we are. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. There. there we are. Oh, hello, everybody. Well, I had to get it myself, but here's the television set I won. Oh, no. Jeepers. Good gravy. Watch your language. <laughs> I'd like to tell you I'll that I... talk to you later, Miss Brooks. Right now, I want to find a likely spot to string the aerial. Come out to the porch with me, Denton. But, Mr. Conklin, don't you think you better Oh, think... stop jabbering. On second thought, you'd better stay in here. You come with me, Boynton. Yes, sir. You too, Harriet. And we may need your long arms, Stretch. You can have them, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to hurry if we're going to hook this up in time to see Mr. Stone dedicate that library at the county jail. We're coming, Daddy. You don't know anything about this, Walter, but we're in a terrible jam. We've already brought two other television sets over from Sherry's, and Mr. Conklin's only entitled to one. I've got some depressing news for you, Miss Brooks. He's not entitled to any. What? That quiz program that called him up was just an April Fool joke. April Fool? But who would play such a monstrous joke? Shake hands with the head monster. (laughs) Walter, you didn't. Well, I only wanted to send Mr. Conklin on a wild goose chase. Now, I've got news for you, Walter. Shake hands with a wild goose. (laughs) Well, thanks for the assistance, folks. Now, let's see where we'll place the set. Ah, this is a good spot right between these other two sets. I, uh, I may not be an interior decorator, but I do have an eye for symmetry. When I see a nice balance... Between these other two sets! (laughs) Miss Brooks, what are these other two sets doing in my living room? They just came in to watch the television. (laughs) I tried to tell you, sir, that Miss Brooks and I brought one over before. And I brought one over right after that, Mr. Conklin, because I didn't know that they brought one over any more than you knew that they brought one over, or I brought one over... Oh, quiet! (laughs) Quiet! Am I to understand that two of these television sets have been stolen? At least. (laughs) Then what's the store going to do when they find out that I have taken a third one? Does that answer your question? Look, there's a police car stopping in front of the house. I just remembered. I gotta go home and mow the lawn. Uh, Stand where you are, Denton! You're in this as deep as we are. Deeper. Don't move, anybody. Mr. Hurley. Well, if it isn't Miss Brooks, the little lady with the big bag. (laughs) Now, Brooks, what's your story? My story? You heard me. Start singing. I must go where the wild goose goes. I must go where the wild goose goes. Just, 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 just a moment. (laughs) May I ask the meaning of this outrageous and illegal invasion of my privacy? Oh, you must be the brains of the mob. 
<laughs> this mob has, has no brain. <laughs> I mean, this is no mob. <laughs> television sets, there are very few of us here. These sets are all the evidence I need. And as this is your house, Mr. Conklin, you're the only one who'll have to come with me to the county jail. Jail? But you can't do that. Miss Brooks, do something. Say something. So long. <laughs> but I don't want to go down there alone. Mr. Boynton, Miss Brooks, you, you can't let me go alone. You, you've got to come with me to the county jail. Oh, that won't be necessary, Mr. Conklin. Not necessary? No, we can watch you on television in 15 minutes. <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Harriet Conklin corroborated her father's story that he'd been told he won a radio and a quiz contest. Mr. Hurley then took the three sets back to Sherry's and left a relieved but aggravated Mr. Conklin sitting in his living room. But if it wasn't Wallace Bacon on the phone, I was the victim of an outrageous hoax. It was only a little April Fool joke, Mr. Conklin. Oh, it was. But who played it on me, Miss Brooks? That I really can't say. You really can't, Miss Brooks? Of course not, Walter. We April Fools have to stick together. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with Joe Quillen and Lester White, and the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, and Willard Waterman. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials, using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. <laughs> Join the American Cancer Society's 1950 Cancer Crusade. 22 million Americans now living will die of cancer unless the present cancer death rate is reduced. Send your contribution now to the American Cancer Society, care of your local post office. Let's keep the fight going. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the 
Columbia Broadcasting System. Sailing from a Zeppelin. A Zeppelin? Oh, I don't mean the big type Zeppelin. He means the small, compact Zeppelin suitable for home or office. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, do you suppose you could inject a note of sanity into this discussion? Well, I, I have thought of a rather fascinating scheme, sir. <laughs> it, it's quite humorous, too. Oh, let's have it. <laughs> well... I've got about a dozen frogs in the laboratory now. I keep them there for the purpose of... Uh, we know what they're there for, Mr. Boynton, and I just had breakfast. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Well, my idea is to take them all into the heart of the town. I'd have them on, on little leashes, of course, and... <laughs> Get this, Mr. Conklin. They'd be dragging a sign behind them. The frogs would be... <laughs> Go on, Boynton. Well, the sign the frogs would be dragging would say... <laughs> it'd say, come to the Madison gym today. Things will sure be hopping. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you have my permission to take your idea and hop out of this room. I really think the handbill will do the trick, Daddy. So do I, Harriet. Miss Brooks, do you concur? Frequently. Oh, <laughs> I'd like to discuss something now that we all seem to have overlooked. Namely, if our auction is to be a success, we lack one fairly important item. Uh, what's that? Something to auction off. <laughs> a very cogent observation. However, the members of the student body were asked to bring their parents' donations to school this morning and leave them just outside the classroom. You, Miss Brooks, will be in charge of augmenting these donations. Me? Oh, but Mr. Conklin, I've got other things to now do with you. Now, tell the to take truth, Miss Brooks. Is there anything as important as raising money for children's playgrounds? Yes, sir. Raising children for the playground. <laughs> hey, you hear that, Mr. Boynton? When are you going to ask... Quiet, Mr. Walter. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I want to help in this campaign. And I really you're don't... going to. I know where we might be able to get some more merchandise for the auction. For Mr. Jessup. He's a pretty good friend of my dad's. Oh, you mean J.D. Jessup, the big real estate man? Yes, sir. He's the biggest philanthropist in this part of the country. Contributes to everything and anything. Huh? He's a natural-born sucker for a worthwhile cause. <laughs> Charmingly put, Walter. And do get in touch with Mr. Sucker. Uh, Jessup. <laughs> now, Mr. Boynton, you will see to it that the auction tables are set up in the gym. Oh, yes, sir. You, Miss Brooks, with the assistance of my daughter, will inspect the merchandise outside the classrooms and jot down the approximate value of each object prior to the auction. But, Mr. Conklin, why do I have to go through all that? Because in addition to obtaining more material for this affair, I have also decided to put you in charge of auctioning it off. Meetings adjourned. Oh, but, sir, I... Don't... I said meetings adjourned. Good day, all. Good day. Good day. Golly. That's quite an honor Daddy conferred on you, Miss Brooks. Just think, you're head auctioneer. Yes, and we both know whose head I'd like to auction off first. All the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember... No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. What with rounding up additional donations for the charity bazaar and doing a little teaching on the side, I had quite a busy morning. When lunch period rolled around, I was still in a collecting mood, so I decided to have lunch with Mr. Boynton, a collector's item if I ever saw one. <laughs> Here's a nice table by the window, Miss Brooks. Oh, good. Now we can throw the food away without any trouble. Oh, it, it isn't as bad as it was. I think the food's picked up. I know. They don't want you to step in it. <laughs> well, the gym's all set for the auction this afternoon. I'm glad you reminded me, Mr. Boynton. You know, some of the donations are in pretty good shape. 
There may be some real bargains on the block this afternoon. Do you think so? Absolutely. If somebody wanted to furnish a little love nest, for instance, he could probably do it for next to nothing. I'll bet he could at that. Yes, sir. Anybody with marriage on his mind could save a pretty penny today. Get a real cozy apartment started. If I run into anybody contemplating such a step, I'll certainly tell him about it. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> no, I could use a couple of things for my apartment at that. When you inspected the stuff this morning, you didn't run across a pair of andirons, did you? As a matter of fact, I did. I don't know who donated them, but they look almost brand new. Well, gee, maybe I can pick them up reasonably at the auction. Well, why wait? We can go look at them right after lunch. And if you like them, we'll have a one-man auction, and I'll see that you get them for a fair price. Oh, but, Miss Brooks, would that be fair to the general public? Oh, haven't you heard? They've got andirons. <laughs> Have you seen Stretch Snodgrass anywhere, Harriet? No, Daddy, I haven't. I told that dummy to bring lunch to my office 20 minutes ago. Please, Daddy. That's no way to talk about Madison star athlete. He may be a star athlete, but it's his brains that need the exercise. <laughs> Calm down, Daddy. I'm going into the cafeteria now, and I'll see what's keeping him. Oh, before I go, Daddy, I just spoke to Mother on the phone, and she told me all the living room furniture has been delivered to the new house. She says she just knows you're going to love it. Mother has such wonderful taste, don't you think? Obviously, she married me. <laughs> oh, one more thing, Daddy. The store made a mistake and delivered our and irons to the school here instead of the new house. They're right outside your office now. Well, what am I supposed to do with them? Bring them home with you after school. They're awfully pretty, Daddy. Come on, take a look at them. Well, there's nothing better to do while I'm waiting for that dunderhead. Here they are. Aren't they pretty? Oh, they're all right, I guess. Let's see what's in this pile over here, Miss Brooks. Hmm. One broken lamp. One pretty beat-up coffee pot. And look at this. An old mix master. It looks as if somebody dropped it in the new mix master. Not much of a haul so far, but I'd better jot it all down anyway. Now, what's this? A box of Christmas tree ornaments. That's timely. <laughs> uh, one woolen sock, a busted harmonica, and here's one ice skate. One ice skate? That'll be for the fellow who gets the one sock. <laughs> oh, here's an item that should bring in plenty. A rusty doorknob. Here's a pair of torn woolen gloves. And look at this, Harriet. One blue jay corn plaster. <laughs> That's for the fellow with the one sock and the ice skate. <laughs> oh, we've got to do better than this. Daddy would have donated some things himself, Miss Brooks, but we traded in all our old furniture for the stuff that's going into our new house. Oh, that's right. You're moving soon, aren't you? Uh-huh. Late this afternoon. I'm sure Daddy will invite you over as soon as we're settled. Your mother might, but not your daddy. He's been angry with me all week, Harriet. That's why he's piling all this extra work on me to get even. Get even for what? A slight accident that occurred in his office on Monday. He asked me to cut the price tag off a new umbrella he'd bought. And? I took a scissors and went after it. Unfortunately, my hand slipped and I cut a nick in the material of the umbrella. How big a nick? Two yards. <laughs> Since then, he's been looking daggers at me, or at least sharp umbrellas. <laughs> well, I've got to get into my next class, Harriet. We'll have to continue this checkup during study period. All right, Miss Brooks. And please, don't take Daddy's tantrums too seriously. Just remember, his bark is much worse than his bite. An even more appropriate slogan would be, let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm sorry, Harriet. I didn't mean that the way it sounds. I wouldn't for a minute want you to think that I considered your father asleep. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream 
hundreds of case histories makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate is directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain... Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, with spring upon us, bigger and better playgrounds for children are the order of the day. Madison High School, where Our Miss Brooks teaches English, promptly volunteered to help its local chamber of commerce collect funds for this worthy cause. That's why our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin, called us into his office early Friday morning. Us consisted of Mr. Boynton and myself as faculty advisors, Walter Denton, the student who runs the school paper, and Harriet Conklin, the student who runs Walter Denton. (laughs) As soon as we were all seated, Mr. Conklin addressed us. We are here to discuss a project which is near and dear to my heart, children's playgrounds in this community. I'm sure I cannot overemphasize the importance of the little ones in our present-day civilization. We got enough little ones. What the Chamber of Commerce wants is some big playgrounds. If that was intended as a witticism, Denton, it missed the mark. I don't know. I thought it had a certain... Quiet, Miss Brooks. (laughs) To help raise money for this worthy project, we are holding a charity auction in our gym at 4 o'clock this afternoon. However, due to a very poor publicity campaign handled by Denton, not very many people know about it. But, Daddy, the poor publicity wasn't all Walter's fault. No, it wasn't, Mr. Conklin. He had lots of other duties. Well, yes, sir. He's been managing the basketball team, for one thing. Just a minute. It's very nice of you all to defend me, but I'd rather have this out with Mr. Conklin myself. Now, about that publicity campaign, Mr. Conklin. What about the campaign? (laughs) Pretty poor. (laughs) Thank you. What I want from you all now are suggestions to stimulate public interest in our auction and bring out a big crowd of bidders. Well, perhaps we could take some spot announcements on the radio. Yes, that would reach a lot of people. Miss Brooks, have you any idea what a 30-second spot announcement costs? We don't have to buy 30 seconds. We could take about five and say something quick, like, Today auction Madison High School. But, Miss Brooks, that sounds as if we're auctioning off the school. Is that bad? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if the object is just to lure people over... Any feasible suggestions? I have an idea, Mr. Conklin. (laughs) Undoubtedly. (laughs) How about you, Harriet? Can you think of anything? I think we should mimeograph some handbills and pass them out door to door during lunch period. A lot of us kids could take different neighborhoods and really plaster the town. Excellent, Harriet. Yes, indeed. This town hasn't been plastered in years. (laughs) What's your idea, Walter? Well, I was thinking. Maybe we could paint a big banner and let it fly over the business district all day. Fly over? You mean trailing from the flagpole on some big building? No. Mother paid $12 for them. Say, they're pretty. (laughs) Well, I'd better get into the cafeteria. I'll send Stretch in with your lunch as soon as I find him. See you later, Daddy. Very well, Harriet. I'll be in my office. Why everything has to happen all at once, I'll never know. All days to be moved. Let's see now. Where are those andirons I saw this morning? Are these them? Yes, those are them. (laughs) These are those. (laughs) Yep, them's the andirons all right. (laughs) How do you like them? Oh, they're perfect. Just what I had in mind. Good. Tell you what I'm going to do. Take them a little closer, bud. What am I offered for these lovely andirons? Uh, how about 50 cents? 
This boy is closer than I thought. I've got 50. Do I hear more? Not from me. Why, I'd give 75 cents for these myself. Well, I'll make it 80. Now you're talking. I got 80 cents. 80 I've got. Going once for 80. Going twice for 80. I'll bid 85 cents. <laughs> That's the spirit. I've got 85. Oh, you're not in this, Mr. Conklin. I'm not? No, sir. Mr. Boynton needs these andirons, and, well, I think 80 cents is a fair price. Oh, so do I, Miss Brooks, considering that I just paid $12 for them. $12? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin. We didn't know they were yours. That's quite all right, Boynton. But just to be on the safe side, I'll take them with me. I'd better get back into my office before Miss Brooks sells my socks. (laughs) We just need one. Hey, Mr. Conklin, I got your lunch. Well, it's about time, Snodgrass. Come with me. I'm terribly sorry about the andirons, Mr. Conklin. There was so much stuff in the hall that there was no way for me to... I know, I know, I know. Put everything on my desk, Snodgrass. Yes, sir. Here's your coffee. I just put sugar and cream in it, and I'm sure it's just the way you like it. I'm sure it is. Except that I ordered tea with lemon. (laughs) Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Conklin. I'll change it. Never mind. Where's my sandwich? Here it is. Bacon and tomato on whole wheat, wasn't it? Yes, it was, Stretch. And I suppose that's why you brought me peanut butter on gluten bread. <laughs> Gosh, Mr. Conklin, I must have got confused. You want me to take it back? No, it's too late now. I'll eat it. But before you leave, I have another errand for you. You could save me a lot of trouble if you would take these andirons over to my new house. The address is 616 Anderson Avenue. Is that clear, Stretch? Yes, sir. You want me to take these, uh... uh what are they again? Andirons. Oh, yeah. Uh, you want me to take these andirons over to your new house at, uh, uh, what was that address again? <laughs> 616 Anderson Avenue. It's very simple if you associate andirons with Anderson Avenue, you see? Oh, sure. You want me to take these Andersons over uh, to Anderson? Just... <laughs> I'll write out the address for you. There you are. Now, put it in your pocket and don't lose it. Okay, Mr. Conklin. Oh, uh, by the way, Snodgrass, Mrs. Conklin may be out shopping, so just leave the andirons on the front porch. Yes, sir. 